Hello and welcome to a new video about electric controls. Today we're going to talk about the base element of an electric control system. Base element of an electric control system are conductors, which are open or closed. A contact. So we either have the contact open or closed. And depending on the state, we are connected to each other or not. <laughs> ah, that's the base element. Huh? This was easy. Huh? And now we go into details. And we see it will not be that easy. Huh? The symbol of a contact yeah, might look as follows. Okay? So this is the contact, it might be open, like shown, or closed. However, there is another symbol as well. Looks like this. Now it's closed, and this one can be opened. Okay. And there's yet another symbol, looks like this. This is somehow a mixture between those two. Huh? So, where is the difference? Huh? This, well, it's symbols. It's like valve symbols, huh? like a way valve. Huh? And even we do have the same or almost the same number in scheme. So this is the connection, huh? where the power is coming to, and this is the working element. Here we are a little bit, here we are also one, two, and four. Huh? The other way around. Two and four. <laughs> First error. Yeah? One, two, four. Yeah? It looks exactly like, like the, the, the wave valve connection. Yeah? Connection where the power is, two working connections, that's it. Here we have a little bit different because here we usually try, draw it four and three yeah? to mark this special contacts. Yeah? This is also why one and two are usually connected. Yeah? One, or one or three and four, they need to be connected. This type here, this is called normally open or NO contact. In German, this is called Schließer. Yeah. Closer. <laughs> yeah. Normally open. And this here is normally closed. Yeah. Or NC contact. Yeah. This is a Öffner in German. Opener. Yeah. Yeah. And this here, this is a changing contact. Yeah. Change. We have one normally closed contact. And one normally open contact. Yeah? In German it's Wechsler. Wechsel contact. Yeah? With those things, I can do a lot of stuff, we will see. Yeah? So, normally open, normally close, or even both combined in one, in one switch. Yeah? This is like the symbol of the valve. And now, we are operating it. Yeah? So let's say we have a normally closed yeah? and we have a manual operation. Yeah? Or we have a normally open and we have a manual operation. Yeah? This here would be exactly like this. Yeah? So this is just a push button. I can operate it, huh? closed now, and I can release it, now it's open again. Huh? There's a push button. Will get back into its original position. Yeah? It's like a spring, it's like spring loaded. Yeah? Then but there might be things like this.
Now it's really a switch. Yeah? This is a switch. It will stay. I can push it, it will stay open. I push it a second time, it will stay closed. Switch. Yeah? Or things like this. Turning switch. Yeah. You see, it's pretty similar to the to the symbols in 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 pneumatic and so. Yeah. It's also the numbering schemes and so. Yeah. This is of course not by accident. This somebody thought about this. So these are manual operated switches. Yeah. Then there are switches with roller levers. I showed them last time. Yeah. Also here you see there is a normally open and normally close contact. Yeah. So switches, yeah. switches, buttons, button will come out. Yeah. Button, taster in German, switch, schalter. Okay. And then they are automatically. Uh, switched elements uh, because one possible operation would also be like this uh, A1, A2 and now operate 2, 4, 1 this thing here is called relay How is this working? This relay is working as electrically operated switch. Yeah? Like we had, also looks like a spool. This is again uh, the electromagnet. Okay, like, like in, there are also electromagnetic controlled uh, valves. We talked about this. Yeah? Also here we have it. Yeah? It actually, it looks like this. So there is somewhere contact. Zack. Zack. And in the middle there's a contact. So there is the hull. Somehow. Yeah. Here below we have the contact. So we have here one, two and four. Yeah. And Somewhere is also a, a coil, something like this. Yeah. Let's make it this side. Yeah. So there's an electromagnet. There is a coil. Yeah. Here is A1 and A2. Yeah. And this coil, if A1 and A2 is energized, yeah, this will be pushed pulled to the other position and will switch. And there is also a spring. This will be pushed back if it's not energized. Okay. Relay. Magnetic, electromagnetic operated switch. So these things inside here, they can switch with a current. Relay, looking like this for instance. This is one possible relay. You see, you have some very coil. You have somewhere 1, 2 and 4. So A1, A2, 1, 2, 4. One of these is normally closed, one of these is normally open. This is a very small relay. We do have a lot of data on it. Because we do have to distinguish between two things. We do have to distinguish between the electrical properties of the coil. For is it Voltage. What voltage I need to turn it off and on. Yeah? So there are, for instance, this here is for instance a 5 volt voltage. Yeah? Then the usual are 24 volt, 24 volt DC, 24 volt, volt AC. This is the coil type. Okay. 
And then there is the switching possibility. How much power those contacts may switch. Yeah, How much voltage. And this is here. We can switch 250 volt AC in this one and 10 amperes. Yeah? Or 30 volt DC and also 10 amperes. Yeah? This is the capability of the, switch, of, the, of the contacts. So there are two different things. The capability or the, the, the nominal voltage of the coil yeah? and the capability of the contacts. This is one example. Yeah? An example which is uh, more frequently used huh? are these things here. Look at that. There you even see, it looks exactly like here. Huh? Or there is a little bit mechanically different. There is the coil. Huh? These are the connections of the coil. Okay, A1 and A2. Here we have the one. In this case, this is two because we are currently resting in this position. Now it's not operated. So this is the normally closed contact and this is the normally open contact. Once I put on here voltage, a certain voltage uh, to the coil, this magnet will pull this iron plate down and this will push the contact to the other side. Uh. This here, for instance, is somewhere must be written 24 volt alternating current, the coil. coil. And we can switch, it must be also 8 ampere, 250 volt alternating current. Here, this looks pretty much the same, right? Look at that. There's not that much difference, right? A little bit different coil. So this already indicates, aha, maybe there is a different coil. And let's have a look. Coil, 12 volt DC. So this was 24 volt AC. This is 12 volt DC. But you see, actually, it looks pretty much the same. So you really have to be careful. Yeah? Especially here, this one. These two are also not the same because this one is 24 volt DC. You really have to look. Yeah? There is even more difference. Now, let's have a look here. Yeah? You see there are two contacts. So there is not only one contact. Here we have only one contact. You see? There is one contact, like shown. Yeah? Here we have two contacts. So with the same coil, I, have, I can operate two different contacts. This is why actually, though, they are down here. There are more than just a few. Yeah? This in, in the symbol, it would look like this, A1, A2, then we have it operated, and then we have one contact, and then we have a second contact, which are switched, operated at the same time, and usually this is called 1-1, one, one, yeah? this is called 2-1, and this is 1-2, 1-4, 2-2, and 2-4. Okay, so first the contact number and then there's the contact. Which contact? Okay. These ones are pretty practical, practical because, you know, they go into those mounting parts. Yeah. This needs to be welded in. This is usually not very often the case. You will see a lot of times things like that. Yeah. This is built in. Yeah. Here you can even see 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 4, 2, yeah? so exactly those numbering schemes, A1 and A2, there's even a labeled coil, and you can insert this. It stays mounted inside the cabinet, once it is broken or whatever, once you need to replace it, because the contacts wear is too much, Chuck, open, pull it out, next one in. Hopefully of the same type. This is a very usual way. This thing here, I just pulled out. This is located here. What is that? First, it's an indication if the coil is energized or not. 
this is pretty nice because then you see if the relay is, is switched on or switched off because here you cannot really see it. Huh? This is actually a nice feature. However, the main feature of this part here is there is a coil. Huh? Here we have A1 and A2. Huh? If we turn off the coil, you know, coils and sudden change of current does not really match together, then we would reach pretty high voltage levels here. And there is a video in Electrotechnic about this. So here we need to have an element, usually it's a diode, yeah, where we limit the voltage or where the current running through can slowly drop. Yeah. In this case, yeah, it's not a diode, it's a resistor. Yeah. So in this case, it will look like, like that. Okay. A varistor is a is a resistor which depends on if there is low voltage, it's high, resistance is high. If there is high voltage, resistance is low. So if there is a certain voltage rise, it will short circuit simply. Yeah. It's working exactly like this this diode, but in both directions. That, that, that's the benefit. This is why there's a varistor inside. So we need something which is limiting this. And these are usually those small parts. If there is a small relay like this, then this is not the case. Why are we needing this? Why are we needing this? The bigger the relays get, the bigger those coils get, the more important is this. Because if this is a big coil, I have a big inductivity and a big inductivity would lead to really, really, really high uh, voltage peaks. Huh? Why is this necessary? Because these things here, they are also switched on and switched off. Huh? So the, this, maybe, maybe we have it like this, that we have somewhere a push button huh? and with the push button we turn a relay which has not one contact but several contacts. Yeah? Then we can, for instance, with one push button we can control a lot of different contacts at the same time via this relay. So I'm turning on and off this coil here. Yeah? And every time I turn it off, I would have here, without these measures, I would have here increased voltage and I have here a little spark. Okay. By the way, yeah, those things can even be such labels. Yeah? You can put on labels, you can write something on, and even if you are if you screw, if you get out the cable, if the cable is also labeled, then you know exactly where the cable is going in. Those things are nice. Yeah? This is why they are used. Yeah, like I said, there will be a spark. So usually, look at that, here's also a switch. Yeah. This is also something modular. This thing here is usually stuck through, stuck through a hole in the front plate of your, of your cabinet. Then you can clamp it. Yeah. Here this is just switching. There's just this, this notch here, which is turning. And with the help of this notch, then I can mount this, cook. And here I can switch then the contacts. And here you see these contacts. These contacts, if I'm really turning slowly, they will back. They will simply switch back. Slowly back. There's a certain, uh, now, and now there's a certain time. Yeah. This 
is because of, of, of contact jittering or something like that. It needs to switch, you know. It does not need to sl slowly open, it needs to switch. So this is a constructive, constructive measure that it really switches. Uh, spring loader and so on, plug, plug. This is why those things sound like that. Clack, clack. Yeah? Also here, the small switches, yeah? they sound like this. Click, click, click. Yeah? This, this is a sign that the contacts there are really boom, touching each other and ripped apart again. Hmm? So this ripping apart. Uh, this is important that I get as soon as possible a big gap between my contacts uh, because then even at high, at higher uh, powers or at higher voltages there is no spark. Uh, at, at beginning there is a little spark and the faster I move those things apart the sooner the spark will simply disappear. Why do we want to disappear the spark? the spark. Well, spark is current which is running and I want to turn off the current. That's number one. Number two, yeah, if we are looking at our contacts, yeah, if they are opening yeah, and here is a little spark remaining, yeah, then exactly at the positions of the spark here it is getting hot. Yeah, because the spark is hot, flash is hot. Yeah, and here we will melt off material. So this means our surface, our contact surface, will not stay nice and round. It will look, there will be wear. Yeah? This is actually the reason why those things are getting worse over time. Okay? So, and then at one point in time you have to replace it. And usually, when do we have to replace it? Because if we then switching such things yeah, together, the only touching, now we switch it back, and they are only touching then at a small tiny part. And at this small tiny part, all our current is passing this small tiny part. So there is quite a resistance, there is quite a heat, and so much heat that we even melt the material, then we have here melted material and then we will get a bigger melted material pool, okay? And because then we have a bigger area which is covered by this melted material, the, the current density is dropping and locally it will not get that hot, so it will cool down and this material will get stiff again, will get solid again and then we welded those contacts together. Then I can stop the actuator, it will simply not open because you say they stick, yeah, beaten. Yeah? We actually we welded them together. Yeah? Because of this wear over time the, 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 the surfaces are really destroyed and because when only destroyed surfaces touch each other, each other have locally high density of current which will locally heat this up. And then such element, the switching element sticks together and it's not switching anymore so it's useless. Okay. Then we have to replace this. In this case replacement is rather easy. In If it's welded in or solid soldered in like this, welded in. I don't know if somebody's welding in relays. <laughs> then it's more of an issue. Relays. Yeah. There's another type of relay, it is called contactor. And a contactor is nothing else than a relay, technically, from a technical point of view. However, you see in a relay there are small tiny contacts. Yeah. And I also mentioned here, for instance, this can switch, what I've said, 8 ampere, 8 amperes. This one can switch 16 amperes, so more, you know, because it's only one contact. The one with the two contacts, 
we have a booted. Ah, here. The one with the two contacts can switch only 8 amperes, yeah, because the contacts are smaller. Oh, already, here we have bigger contacts, we can switch more current. Here we have a smaller contact, we can switch less current. Huh? However, both of them are 24 volts, I think. Or this is... Doesn't really matter. Uh, here. Huh? This is 24 volts, this is... Where is the coil written? This is 24 volts DC, this is also 24 volts DC. However, this is with one contact, this is with two contacts. One contact can switch 16 amperes, each contact here can switch 8 amperes. Okay. So, if we do need to switch a lot of amperes, huh, then we need massive contacts. And the thing with massive, more massive contacts than this, where we really switch and so on, this is called contactor. But technically, it's pretty much the same. Uh, a contactor is a massive relay. That's it. Okay. Relays. There are also relays then out there. This one I've mentioned. Yeah. Then there are also relays which uh, do not draw usually like this. A1, A2, and here the contact. Yeah. And here we have also this one. Yeah. It's like a parachute. This means when activated, when activated this relay, it will not switch immediately, it will switch delayed, on delay, on delay relay, time relay. And then there are relays out there, A1, A2, this is the parachute, this here is also a sign, but you can also look at the parachute. The parachute is looking in the other direction, so it will whoop, yeah? the parachute will fold, yeah? it will switch on immediately. However, if turned off, the parachute will slow down the turning off. Yeah? So this is somehow parachute style. Yeah? So this is this is an on delay. This is an off delay. Quite some, something, yeah? Then we, we would also have other switching elements, like this here, for instance. This is a proximity switch, capacitive one. Yeah? If something is getting close, there are contacts inside there, they are switching. Yeah? However, these are semiconductor contacts, they are not with wear, yeah? so this is working, working longer. There are read switches then out there, uh, which are operated by a, a magnet. Yeah. So contactless switches is also also possible. Yeah. yeah. So this is the base. Like I said, the, the base element is the contact. Yeah. And then we have several types of how we can operate those contacts. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the processing elements and input elements usually. And then we do have. The working elements, yeah, and working elements are this one. This is a lamp. Want indication? Book, yeah, something right here. Lamp, yeah. Switching element. Book, book. <laughs> lamp. Yeah. If it's not a lamp nowadays, we usually have LEDs. Then it is looking like that. Yeah. Now it's an LED. Optical indications. Yeah? Then there are motors. Motor. Yeah? We can even. Now it's a AC, a DC motor. Now it's an AC motor. Yeah? And now it's a three phase AC motor. Okay? Then there are things like that horns. Yeah. Then there are bells, then there are sirens, yeah. 
so optical LED horn bell siren optical indication acoustical indication working elements yeah DC motor AC motor AC motor one phase three phase working elements with those processing and input elements we operate the working elements and how we can put those processing elements together that we have a certain type of logic like we've did with valves because I said this is nothing more or nothing less than wave valves yeah? and those wave valves maybe switch big wave valves the contactors yeah? and the contactors then operate massive working elements yeah? how this electrical controls are programmed we will see in next video okay we talk about the diagrams and so on like we talked about the diagrams in 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 pneumatics or hydraulics yeah, the schemes are we talking about an electrical schemes for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye